Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the air-conditioned building. The first order of business for the meeting is to uh, read the posting of the warrant so that we can say that we have a valid town meeting. I'll ask the town clerk. Pursuant to within warrant, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Sunderland by posting up attested copies of the same at the post office, the Sunderland Public Library, and the town office building, 14 days at least before the date hereof, as within directed. Frederick A. Laurinaitis, September 6, 2016, at 1 p.m. So now we have a ballot town meeting. Uh, if you look at the warrant for this evening, you'll notice that there are a number of votes that require a two-thirds majority. There are two ways, well, th three ways, I guess, that we can deal with these. One is if they're unanimous, then it's clear that whatever way they're unanimous is going to be, it's going to prevail. If there is a split vote, and we ask for a voice vote on it, if it's a voice vote and it's split, then if it's obvious that it's one way or the other, the moderator has the prerogative of declaring either for or against. If the moderator decides to go that route, his decision can be challenged by any seven voters. If that occurs, then we have to take a uh, actual count. And the actual count would come from a standing vote. So that's going to be the procedure that we're going to follow this evening. So in case they're not all unanimous, we'll have to have some tellers. And if I could ask, Vinnie Grandonico, Liz Sillen, Laura Williams, and Mike Wisman to come forward to get sworn in, please. Okay, so now we have the tellers and we're ready to go. Article one. Oh, one more motion. Uh, since you all have copies of the motions, I'd like to have someone make a motion that we dispense with reading of all of the motions just to save time. So moved. Motions made and seconded to dispense with reading of each of the motions. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Oh, great. Thank you. Article 1. Good evening, Mr. Moderator. I'd like to move Article 1. I'll second. Okay, motion's made and seconded. Any information? Uh, if I could, Mr. Moderator, uh, this, this body, or maybe it's bigger, it's bigger sibling several years ago. We have to make it too close. How's that, Chris? Good? Okay. So uh, we voted at town meeting a couple of years ago to purchase property known as 120 North Main Street. And in that original town meeting warrant article, the purpose was spelled out, the purchase was spelled out, the value was spelled out. However, in that original town meeting warrant, there was no method of conveyance. So tonight's meeting is to afford the board as well as community the opportunity to convey the property for, if you read the article, further authorize the board of selectmen to convey said parcel for community housing purposes on such terms and conditions and for such consideration which may be nominal as the board deems appropriate and to accept an affordable 
uh, housing restriction therein. That language essentially was missing in the very first town meeting. And at that point, or at this point, if I could turn the uh, conversation over to uh, Lauren Starr, who's been chair of the 120 North Main Committee. Let me go get those lights. Can you guys hear me? Ooh, that's good. Um, so yes, I, I've been chair of the 120 North Main Street Committee, and I wanted to take this opportunity um, to not only explain why we have this article on uh, the warrant tonight, but um, to catch everyone up on where we've been, uh, what we've done over the last two years on the project, so that um, if, it, if and when you, whatever, whichever way you vote on this, you feel like you are informed about the project. So, if you can go here. So essentially, as Scott said, um, just about two years ago, um, this body authorized the town to purchase um, with CPA funds the property at 120 North Main um, with the intention of developing it for uh, affordable elderly housing. And I think one thing that we really want to make clear is when we entered into the, I think that there was generally a consensus that this was something that the town needed and was in favor of, and this was a way to do it. And I think the thing to be um, clear about from the beginning is that uh, this, is not a mun this was never intended to be a municipal project. It's not like our library, our public safety building, or our school. This is not something that we want to own. It's kind of a midway project. We would like to see this happen here. We don't want to own it, but we also don't want to, um, we don't want to operate it, that's for sure. Um, but we also don't wanna, didn't want to just leave this prime piece of real estate open for a developer. We want to guide a developer to do what we think is a good idea for this parcel in the center of town. Uh, that, that's the house uh, located at 120 North Main. Um, and you probably all have in your hand the um, timeline. But I just wanted to review that we, we've author we authorized purchasing this property nearly two years ago. We've been working on it for that long. Um, thanks to uh, Sherry and also uh, former town administrator Margaret Narowitz, uh, we had um, over $30,000 in grants over these last two years to do all the background work that we needed to do to get to the point where we could try to engage a developer um, for this project. So we were funded to do a site feasibility study, to do a market analysis, to do um, a uh, financial feasibility study, and all this is things that you really have to have in place in order to, you need to provide that information for a potential developer. Um, and more recently we had, um, uh, once we got through all that, we knew we wanted to issue an RFP, which is a request for proposals asking developers to um, how would you do this project um, and see if we get a response that, that we're willing to accept. Um, and we had a grant from the COG to do that. So we've been working with, some, with um, the, uh, the COG on that. So, that. so we have not expended any of our own funds and done all this work. Um, and we're here tonight to try to do the last step so that we can actually issue this RFP. These are our committee members. I'd like to thank everyone for sticking with this for two years. Um, and uh, the committee's sitting here, Scott's on the stage, and um, we had a really good range of experience on this committee from um, architecture, design, development, real estate. Um, we really had a lot of um, uh, town administration. We really had a lot of um, expertise and um, appreciate that people have, have stuck with this, it's been a long process. Um, so uh, we, with the grants that we had, we hired the Berkshire Design Group to do the site feasibility, um, LDS Consulting did the market study, and the Franklin Regional Council of Governments helped us develop the RFP, because we wanted to make sure that our I's were dotted and our T's were crossed, and we hope we did that. Um, so again, this is the house. Um, the t why did we bought the land in the first place? Because of its location, its connection to the community near the town center, close to the library, walking distance to stores and restaurants and public transportation. I think we, the selectmen felt this was an ideal site for this kind of project. It's not, you know, it, it, 
you kind of can't get any better in our town. Um, if you see the red line up there, that's the lot. So it has the house on North Main. It has quite a lot of land in the back. And um, that, that sort of dark area is, is the wetlands, um, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, we, knew, we knew there were wetlands. We knew there were some um, considerations on the site. Um, yep. Sorry. The house, do you see the, the, where the red section is skinny? I don't have a pointer. Oh, okay, so it's where the red That's the house. And then um, if you go to the end, all the way to the right, that's button ball. That's button ball. Yeah. So we talk about. Well, we will talk about that. Um, here are some goals, and these are su super important, um, because these are goals that, um, be, that the town has in terms of the development of this property, and this is why it's important that we are driving the project, because if it goes, if it were to be developed by a developer and not, and not driven by the town, these would probably not be the top concerns. So it's important to us to maintain the character of the street in the neighborhood. Um, it's important to us, and particularly to the Historic Commission, to keep the house and to not have a uh, break in the rhythm of Main Street. Uh, it's important to us, and particularly the Conservation Commission, that we preserve the wetlands. And if this went to a developer uh, under normal 40B, we would actually not have to preserve as, as much of the wetlands as we are asking someone to preserve. And um, we are aware that we need to provide a sufficient number of units to make the project financially feasible, but it's not really in our interest to totally max out what could be out there. We want to keep it in within the character of the neighborhood. And that's a fine line because um, the market study um, has shown that this is a very marginally feasible project. And um, so we have to, you know, we have to, obviously, someone takes us on, it, it's a, it, you know, it has to have some economic benefit. Um, so just to talk about character, you know, we all know what North and South Main Street look like. Um, it's kind of the heart of our town. It's what we think of, and it's important to us that we don't uh, give that up, uh, even though we are promoting this very small development right off of Main Street. Um, Towns looked this way for a long time, and I just want you to, um, so there's 120 North Main Street um, many years ago. Um, I like that one, future demos. Um, <laughs> future Blue Heron. Um, and you can see actually uh, between the future demos and 120 North Main, that large barn in the back, which would have been you know, a common structure uh, to be behind homes uh, in, the, in the earth. Days gone by. Um, and here's how it looks today. Um, when we started this project, it actually took us a long time to get, get it going because that was the winter we had a ton of snow and we couldn't even get a survey until April. Um, there's, that, there's the lot again, just to remind you how fairly large it is. This is what we found out from the survey. Um, so if you look toward the back, which is where you have the room for the development, the dark green area is the wetlands. And so the wetlands basically cuts off the front of the property from the back. So I think, you know, when we talked about this originally, there were definitely concerns um, from residents at Buttonball uh, about uh, kind of encroaching there. Uh, that's not an option because we cannot go over the wetlands. So our, our project has to stay from that dark green uh, area forward. So we have a youth. Um, pretty significant buffer in the back. There's no talk about connecting um, there. All access has to be off North Main. Um, just want to remind you about barn structures and how that barn was sitting behind there originally. Uh, we looked at many scenarios. I'm going to show you the scenario that the committee landed on, which is scenario 10. There were 11 scenarios um, with different options, some with independent units. Um, we really wanted to try to make the, less, the least impact on North Main as possible. And so this is the plan for what we are calling option 10. So on the left-hand side, right at North Main Street, you see the existing house, which we're insisting be uh, retained. And then toward the back, we're proposing um, 
a sort of two-winged barn-like structure, two stories high, connected with an elevator unit and some common spaces. Um, it right now looks like we are talking about approximately 18 units. Um, and again, 18 units seem to be the tipping point between this being something that a developer might take on and you know, 16 looked like it wouldn't fly. And in the RFP, we are saying approximately 18 units to try to give, we don't want to discourage someone who feels like if they could get the 19th unit in, it would fly, but we're you know, not going to accept a proposal of whatever, 30 units. Um, this is a view uh, from North Main Street, so you can see where the house is uh, labeled, 120 North Main. There would be a drive between uh, that house and the house to the left. Um, our goal is to keep it as narrow as allowed and to uh, encourage enough landscaping that it is not um, offensive to the residential neighbors. The development is toward the back. Um, we are talking, I think, about 30 or so parking spots. Um, this is not a lot of traffic. If you consider the traffic that the number of people that visit our, the library every day and whether you consider School Street a busy street, um, this is about a tenth of that activity. So I think uh, that's really not uh, going to be that much of an issue. It's really a fairly small development. Um, and that's, you know, hopefully how it might look. Um, and it would be the developer's going to have to tell us what they, pro what they propose doing with the house. Um, the house is honestly in need of being pretty much a gut renovation. Um, so we're uh, assuming that it could possibly be turned into a, some units. Um, and there again, you know, just trying to have the least impact possible. So again, that's the overhaul. And the reason we're here tonight is because um, the way this works, um, we've had a lot of expertise, but we've learned a lot about um, affordable housing um, over the last two years. Um, and uh, one is that it's uh, totally dependent on subsidies, on tax breaks, on whatever. There are really a handful of developers that do this. This is not a um, big money maker for anyone. So we are um, hopeful that we will get some responses to the RFP. We do not think we're going to be flooded with them. Um, we are hoping that uh, we are anticipating, you know, there are, there are a few organizations, usually nonprofits, that do this in this area. Um, that's where we think you know, we're most likely to get responses from. Um, and essentially, our contribution as a town to this project is the land. So uh, this is a project of um, the estimates we saw were three million or up. Um, and our, pro you know, our contribution is the 265 or so that we spent uh, for the property. Um, in order to not Every time, everything we do that makes the response to the RFP more complicated reduces the likelihood that we will get any responses at all. And so the feeling of all the consultants that we've talked to is that um, if, we, if the selectmen don't have the authority to, if, the, if, we get, if we get proposals that we like, that we want to accept, they need to have the authority to convey the land to the developer and it will have, you know, restrictions and there will be a deed restriction and there will be, uh, you know, milestones that have to be uh, achieved. Um, but if they, if they don't have the ability to convey the land, uh, it is really not worth someone's time to, sub to submit for this project. Um, again, we're not really sure how profitable it's going to be to anyone as it is. So we're trying to make it um, as clean as possible and not have it be contingent upon coming to a vote later on. And that's why we're here tonight. So I guess we're are we live now? Uh, I wanted to thank Lauren and I, her presentation is really what we've come to expect. Uh, from Lauren when she gets involved in something and is part of a committee. 
So we thank Lauren for an excellent presentation and for the committee for the work that they've done on this. <laughs> I have one question as a point of clarification. In the 18 units that is possible, does that include the house as well as part of the 18 or is that separate? It yeah, I think it's I think it's right now. I think right now you have you have to accept the fact that the drawing was done by a landscape architect. Um, it's, do, it's done for the site, really, to see what would fit on the site. It's not designed. Right. Um, we think it's about 16 units and two in the house. Um, and again, I, think the R, I believe the RFP reads approximately 18 because we want to provide at least a little flexibility, um, depending on, you know, if someone comes up with a proposal that looks like it fits and they can get 20 units in and that makes it a go, then I think that that's something that we ought to consider because um, we okay. have not designed it. Okay. So. Thank you. Um, anyone that's going to speak, please come up and use the microphone because the acoustics in here are terrible and there's also a possibility of folks listening to us at home. So any discussion? Can you help me understand who gets to live, or who, how do you qualify, or what it, what it entails to fill these units? I, uh, how does one qualify to build the units? Build them. Build them. Live in them. Live in them. Hi. So um, I'm Alyssa LaRose. I work at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, um, and I've been helping the committee with putting together the RFP. Um, and um, basically, uh, the units would be restricted to um, seniors age 60 and over, um, <clears throat> and they would have affordability restriction. And so to qualify to live in one of the units, um, you, there would be an application process where you would have to um, provide some information to um, ensure that you meet the income guidelines. Um, and the process is, um, it's a lottery process, and I don't, I'm not familiar with the details of how it works, but it's an open process, it's advertised, people can um, um, submit their interest in living there, and then the selection process is um, typically random. Um, however, you can have a local preference, um, and so what we've written into the RFP is that um, a developer who responding to this would include local preference in their plans, which would um, ensure that a certain percentage of units would go to Sunderland residents, um, but it all has to comply with fair housing laws, and um, um, so I, don't, I can't say what that amount would be. Um, however, the market study, as well as other studies ha that have been done, show a great need for this housing in this town, as well as the immediate surrounding towns. Um, so it's like you would have a lot of local interest, but it can't be guaranteed that only Sunderland residents would live there. But it would be 60 plus, and it would be um, restricted to a certain income level. You said it would be 60 plus? Yes. What was that question, please? She asked um, if it would be age 60 plus, and I said yes. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, are you ready to vote? Yep. Okay. We'll try a voice vote first, and then we'll see where we go from there. Okay. All those in favor of Article 1, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. I'll declare it that the ayes have it. Okay. Article 2. Explanation, please. Uh, Mr. Moderator, this year we have a second student that's placing 
out of district to attend uh, Smith Vocational School. Uh, we had one, people who were here for the annual town meeting may remember we had one allocation appropriation. Uh, we were notified after a town meeting a second student uh, was attending. Last time a student was attending Smith after our town meeting, the administration at the school, Smith Vocational School, was very generous and, and let us go until the spring. We felt that having that generosity for one student, we might uh, reciprocate with some generosity, knowing we had this special town meeting scheduled and allowed it to be placed on the warrant for this body to vote. Any discussion? This is a requirement, is it not? But we, gotta, we have to pay to go to school, and you pay full tuition when you're going out of district. Out of district. As well as transportation, Mr. T Mr. Moderator. Okay. Secondly, Mr. Moderator, these are uh, appropriation is targeted to come from stabilization. Not my favorite thing to do with a recurring ex potential recurring expense. However, it is the only, one of the only certified series of funds that we have, and the goal would be to replenish this value at the Springtown meeting after free cash is certified and other available funds are identified through the year-end closeout. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Any discussion? What is the cost? Oh, great question. $18,000. Per year? Yeah. 17 plus well, 17 plus transportation of a thousand dollars it's uh, yeah 17,000 uh, that any would have to pay to go to Smith vocational plus there's transportation since we've got two um, the transportation added just five dollars a day right but you know if I if I could mr. moderator that's a wonderful question even inside all of our own school districts what is a real true cost of attendance and uh, those numbers can be pretty um, interesting. So I would suggest that, you know, whether it's an out-of-district or even our own, education is, is uh, you know, with great value, but also with some cost. Like there's two now. Yep. You know, what is the cost of If, if I could, Mr. Moderator, they can only attend uh, out of district school in this case if there's no programs in the district that are available that they, they're looking for a course of study. Right. So forestry, a handful of others that are down at Smithville. But you're absolutely right. You could have a handful and it could become quite serious. Well, the, the student can change his mind and or her mind, and uh, clearly they can graduate. Yep. Oh no, this is an annual appropriation. No, this is not recurring. This is this attendance this year only. But that's a really good and, question. It's not a program we're developing. And and the other the other thing is is that one of the responsibilities of our um, superintendent and our business manager is there. Uh, continually in contact with Smith Vocational to ensure that the students are in the shops right. that they said they're going to be. So if they move out of those shops, uh, and it's a shop that's carried at Franklin uh, Regional or Franklin Vocational Technical School, then they would move to Franklin Vocational also. Right. Good questions. Anyone else? All right, because it's money being appropriated from stabilization account, when we put money into stabilization, it requires a two-thirds vote, and to take it out requires a two-thirds vote. So, all those in favor of Article 2, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Declare it unanimous. Article 3. Mr. Moderator, would like to move Article 3? Second. Article 3 has been moved and seconded. Explanation, please. This is basically to cover a total of five new employees for the town. We've got three with the school and two with the town. Um, this is basically to cover their uh, health insurance plans. Is his mic on? Can you folks hear him? Did, did everybody get that? No. This is essentially to cover, since our last town meeting, five new employees for the town, three with the town directly, and then three with the school. And this is to cover their health insurance. 
And like the last um, article, it's coming from stabilization now, but we want to shift it over to our regular source because this is a recurring revenue offset in that sense because we've got new employees. Could, could I uh, clarify, Mr. Moderator? This is actually uh, em em new employees who are enrolling. We have not added headcount at the town level nor at the school level. It's participation. Actually, the school did add a couple, but the, the, the enrollment is what we're actually paying for. We had employees in prior positions who did not participate in the health plan. So we didn't add a bunch of headcount exclusively. En enrollment. Any discussion? All right. Excellent. Again, two thirds count required. All those in favor of Article 3, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Declared unanimous. Thank you. Article 4. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 4. Second. Article 4 has been moved and seconded. Explanation, please. Basically, there was a, uh, all, all the town buildings that use water and sewer um, pay the same rates as all the homeowners do. And this was something, it was a sewer charge at the Sunland's Public Safety Complex that kind of got lost um, through a couple things that happened. And we owe the sewer, the, the town owns a sewer, owes the sewer $1,423.30. Now our past retired fire chief always had a problem paying ourselves but as most of us know uh, not everybody's on the sewer district itself so this is a the public safety complex is for everyone in the town so it's a town responsibility so it's a bill that we should pay okay any questions okay if not all those in favor of article 4 please say aye Aye, aye, aye. All those opposed? Nay. Declare it unanimous. Article 5. Uh, I'd like to move Article 5, Mr. Moderator. Second. Article 5 has been moved and seconded. Sure Explanation, please. Just an overview. So, uh, if I could, Mr. Moderator, uh, we had, according to Blue Cross and Blue Shield, received an overpayment for services, and they're looking for their $396.81. Uh, refunded. So we're getting money back? Uh, no, no, we're writing them a check. They think they overpaid us and our oh, account oh, and, and your treasury uh, collector okay. have gone back and said, yeah, okay. actually they did overpay us. Okay. Try as we might to get one over on Blue Cross for 400 <laughs> bucks. <laughs> okay, again, coming from stabilization account. Correct. Any discussion? I'm sorry, Mr. Moderator, this is an ambulance reserve. I thought, it, according to this, it says this is not a bill. So we don't have to have nine tenths? Yeah, I think we have to have nine tenths. Okay. But again, the funding source is ambulance reserve, not stabilization. Okay. Okay, any discussion? All right, all those in favor of Article 5, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Declared unanimous. We need one more motion, folks. Mr. Moderator, I'd like the motion to uh, dissolve, please. Okay, Second. motion's made and seconded to dissolve the meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Thanks, everyone, for coming out on such a warm night. And we appreciate the discussion. Thank you.